Hi everyone, this is Sharan here. Welcome to my channel. Today in this video, I'm going to talk about the practical aspects of solving about 90% of data science problems. Many people reach me asking me that they have done various courses, they have done various certifications, but still they are struggling to get their job. It is very common in data science. Like uh, after talking to many of them, I clearly understood that the one thing that they were lacking was the practical exposure. They know about various techniques. They know about the algorithms, the boot camps, the courses teach you about all these things, but they don't exactly teach you how and when to apply those techniques. All you need is you need to have more practical exposure. You need to work on more projects. So in this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the six common data science problems. What should be the method that should be used in order to approach and solve those problems? I will also provide you references to some of the notebooks which are returned by the experts and which are well documented that will help you to learn about all these data science problems thoroughly. So before getting into the topic, if you like what I'm doing here, please give a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more similar data science related content. And uh, let's get into the topic. The first two are the regression problem and the classification problem. So these two problems are commonly used. Many people who are trying to learn data science are more interested in NLP and computer vision. I have seen many people that without going through the basics, without understanding the basic concepts, they are trying to directly get into the NLP and the computer vision, uh, which seems to be quite interesting. But the, the truth is about majority of the data science problems are still being solved using like a regression or classification algorithm. So it's very important as a data scientist to have a very good knowledge. If you don't have enough knowledge about a computer vision application or a NLP problem, it is fine. But if you don't know the basics, if you don't know how to solve a regression problem, if you don't know how to approach and classification problem, then that is a problem for you that will impact your probability of getting a job. And hence, what I would suggest is, I would suggest you spend time uh, in learning all these basic concepts. The first two problems that we are going to see is regression and classification. The methodology that are used to solve these two problems are very similar to each other. It will start with the data analysis. So we start with the univariate analysis to understand what is the target variable, like what is the characteristics of the target variable, what we want to predict. The second one is the multivariate analysis. So here, what we try to do is we try to understand the relationship between the independent variables and the dependent variables. We try to see what are all the various patterns and we use the visual analysis in order to extract various insights out of the data. Visual analysis is very uh, useful because our brains are wired in such a way that it is very easy for us to extract the patterns out of visual data. In data science problem, of course, we need to uh, communicate the insights to the business stakeholders. And the best way to do it is visual analysis to show the charts and then communicate the various patterns in the data. So these are all the various uh, data analysis that needs to be done first. After doing the analysis, then comes the data preparation. In real life uh, data science problems, there will be a lot of issues with the data. For example, the data will be noisy, which means that there could be many missing data points. That would be a lot of outliers in the data. If there is outliers, it will have an impact on uh, uh, the variance and the standard deviation. And hence, it is always better in order to solve the outliers problem. Right? If there are very few outliers, it is better to keep them out of the data set. If there are a large number of outliers, then we need to think of some technique that can be used in order to handle those outliers and then use them in our model. The other issues could be like scaling. There could be multiple attributes in different scales. For example, age in years and salary in hundred thousands. It is not always uh, possible for us to include the attributes which are in different scales. There are some algorithms which expect the data to be in similar scale. And hence, uh, it is required for us to use some kind of a transformation technique and transform the data into a format that is being usable for the algorithm. That would be uh, many categorical attributes which can't be directly used as it is. So we need to make use of a suitable data transformation. So this is the data preparation step. So after doing the proper data analysis, we do the data preparation so that the data is ready to be consumed by the model. And for both regression and classification problem, most of these steps are very similar. The next step is the model building evaluation and the model tuning. The only difference would be the model evaluation. In case of regression problem, some of the uh, metrics that are used for evaluating the model are mean absolute error, root mean squared error, mean squared error. These are some of the metrics that are used for regression problem. On the other hand, when we have a classification problem, the metrics that are commonly used are accuracy, confusion matrix, precision recall. These are some of the commonly used technique ROC curve for classification problems. And apart from uh, the model evaluation, majority of the steps, uh, the pipelines, the different phases of the project are very similar for both the regression and classification problem. So if you spend enough time in solving uh, these problems, it will be very useful. 
So if you want to learn better about solving both regression as well as classification problem, I will provide to a reference note, but in the description, please uh, look into those uh, reference strips. It will exactly tell you how to approach these two problems, like how to do the data analysis, how to thoroughly analyze the data, how to do the data transformation, how to prepare the data for the algorithm, like for what type of input data, like how, what kind of transformation needs to be done. So these notebooks will be well documented and then it exactly shows you the methodology that should be followed to solve these problems, which is very important to learn about all the things that are required to solve a data science problem. It is not if enough if you know about the techniques, you need to know about solving a particular problem. That is the practical aspect, which is very useful in order to track your in job interviews. So next one, the third is the clustering data science problem. So clustering problems are those which comes as part of the unsupervised learning. So all these uh, data points here in case of clustering is like, uh, un uh, like unlabeled. We don't know what it is exactly. For example, previously in classification, we could have something like a customer churn problem where we would have a training data set and a labeled data set where we know which customers have churned, which customers did not churn. Whereas in case of clustering problems, we don't know the labels, the data is unlabeled. And hence we need to use the data as such, see the characteristics that are present in the data in order to come up with the various clusters. The approach for solving a clustering data science problem is almost similar to the previous one. We need to start with the data analysis. We need to first thoroughly understand the data. But the second step is we need to use the proper algorithm and then we need to use like a proper technique for doing the clustering. So this depends upon our objective. For example, if our objective is to let a, uh, is to let a tag the data points into one cluster only, that like each data point can belong to only one cluster. So then we need to use of uh, techniques such as a k-means algorithm or a hierarchical clustering. If we want one data point to belong to multiple clusters, like we want to know the probability of a data point belonging to different sets of clusters. So then the suitable algorithm is fuzzy k-means algorithm. If we want to have hierarchy in place, so then hierarchical clustering is the one. The next step is to identify the ideal number of clusters. Trust me, identifying the ideal number of clusters is not so easy. We need to spend enough time to understand the ideal number of clusters. Depending upon the algorithm that we are using, the techniques that can be followed could be very different. So we need to use proper techniques in order to understand like how many clusters should be present in the data. There is no correct or wrong answer. We can come up with a number of clusters, but it is important to come up with the optimal number of clusters. And after coming up with the clusters, the data science problem here doesn't end. The next is the most important part. We need to justify why we have come up with various clusters. We need to show the character states within the cluster, like the, the, the character states that are similar within the data, data points that are present in the cluster. What are all the various character states that are different across the clusters? So we need to show these in order to prove that the number of clusters that we have come up with is the ideal number of clusters and then it shows a distinctive pattern. So these are all the clustering data science problems. So if you want to know about solving a clustering data science problem, I will provide a link in the description to a reference notebook, which will clearly explain you the various tips involved in solving any clustering data science problems. The next one is the recommendation system. Recommendation system are very popular among the business. The business are uh, finding like huge value by adopting the recommendation system. Recommendation systems are now being used across multiple industries. Some of the benefits of using this particular application are like for example, as per Doodle Fats, uh, about 70% of the app installs on Doodle Play comes from the recommendation. About 60% of watch time on YouTube is being uh, uh, due to the recommendation that are being provided to the users. And about 35% of sales on Amazon coming from its recommendation. 75% of watch time on Netflix is coming from the recommendation. You can see a huge number of user engagement because of the recommendation system. In the future, that, that is no wonder if there are being recommendations provided in physical stores as well. That could be a merge of online as well as offline retail shopping experience. And hence it can improve like, the altogether the shopping experience itself in the future. So all these recommendation systems can be solved mostly by using two methods. One is the collaborative filtering, other is the content-based filtering. In case of collaborative filtering, again, it can be based on either user-based or item-based. So when I say user-based, what we try to do is, let's say, for example, we want to provide recommendation to user A. What we do is we find the similar users who are very similar to the user A. 
we understand the patterns of those similar users. We see the various products that are being bought by those similar users and then use that to provide a recommendation to the user A. In, in case of the item based method, what we try to do is we try to come up with the clusters of items. When a user buys an item from one of those clusters, we try to understand like what are all the other items that are very similar to it and recommend those items to the user. So that's the item based method. So this is the collaborative filtering. In case of content based filtering, as the name suggests, we make use of the content. Let's say we have products and we have users. What we do is we make use of the product description as well as the profile information of the users in order to provide the best recommendation. One of the best scenario where this can be used is like a dating websites. So that's about the recommendation system. So implementing the recommendation system are not as complex. Uh, the approach is very standard, like very simple. Like if you are interested in learning about like the implementation of a recommendation system, check the description. I will provide a link to a notebook which will have the detailed steps involved in implementing a recommendation system by using multiple methods. And then it will highlight you what are all the difference between all those methods, what are all the various data preparation activities that needs to follow for each one of those methods. The next one is uh, natural language processing. So far, we have been using the structured data in order to provide various values to the business. Next comes the unstru unstructured data. There is so much of information present in the unstructured data. There is so much of unstructured data being generated. There is a lot of activity on the social media platform. There is a lot of interaction at, like, across many industries between the customers as well as the organization. It could be like a calls made to the customer support agent. All these calls can be converted into text data. And then there is so much of information in all these text data, like what kind of issues are being compliant by the user. What are all the various uh, queries that are being normally asked? And there are so many useful information are present in these as well as in the social media data about what people are talking about various features, about various brands and about various companies. So if we make use of these data efficiently, that could be a lot of useful things that can be uh, implemented. That, that could be a lot of uh, uh, use cases where we can improve the uh, the user experience some of the common nlp problems are like a sentiment analysis to understand what is the sentiment of the user maybe about a topic about a brand about a company or about a particular uh, event the next one is the summarization there is a large number of unstructured data out there it's not pos always possible for a user to read all those data to get an uh, uh, a summary of what is being uh, included in those documents. So in, in those cases, if we want to have a summary of uh, uh, various documents, the best one is the summarization. The common methods that are used for summarization are like abstract method and extractive method. In case of extractive method, we try to make use of the document, the words that are present in the document in order to come up with a summary. In case of abstractive method, as the name suggests, the algorithm comes up with its own kind of a summary, like abstract of what is present in the document. The next one is the topic modeling. In many cases, a huge number of documents would have been collected by various organizations from the customers and from other sources. And it might not be really possible to go through all of them and then maybe uh, categorize them into different groups and, and flag them based on what content is present in the uh, document. So we can make use of NLP technet in order to flag uh, uh, different groups or like to, to categorize them into different clusters, so which uh, otherwise would have taken a huge amount of uh, effort. With NLP techniques, it can be done like uh, quite fast. The final one is the computer vision application. Computer vision application, we try to extract information from images and video data. We try to mimic what our brain is doing. Like depending upon what we are watching, our brain is able to classify different things. It, it is able to get various information. So we are trying to mimic this on an algorithm. We try to make the machine intelligent enough based on the image or the video that we are providing. The common use cases of computer vision application are image classification, image detection, event detection, and uh, image classification. So these are all the common um, use cases of computer vision application. In all these use cases, the core principles, the approach of solving a computer vision application is very much uh, similar. Like, uh, the methodology will not change much from one use case to the other use case. Until recently, the computer vision applications were not accessible for many people who are trying to learn data science. Even people who are already into data science were finding it hard to learn about computer vision application because the techniques were quite complex. It was all mostly based on like a deep learning and a neural network, and it required a lot of computing power. Like it was not possible to exactly implement a computer vision application on a low configuration system. 
But now with uh, a lot of cloud application and with a lot of automation on this particular space, especially a lot of can be done by anyone, like without even writing a single line of code. If you are interested in knowing about the computer vision application, like how to solve those problems, what are all the various AutoML solution in this space that can help you to solve computer vision application without writing a single line of code, check the description. I will provide two articles, one to an AutoML solution that can be used to solve various computer vision applications. Second one is an, an title notebook, which will clearly show you the various steps involved in solving a computer vision application using convolution neural network. So that's it. These are all the six different data science problems, which covers almost 90% of anything that a data scientist would work on. So if you know about all these six data science problem, if you are thorough about solving these data science problem, if you can uh, uh, refer to the reference strips that I have attached in the description and then learn from them, that will be enough for you to gain all the practical experience that would be expected from you in any data science interview. I hope you have learned something new from this video. If you like what I'm doing here, please give a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And I will see you in the next video. Bye until then.